Oh, okay, I thought I was gonna go to another screen, but I guess it's just gonna have the RL rot until I click. Rolling with Nat 20. I'm Nat 20, and we're back with more Keeper RL, now in its Alpha 13 version. Now, there's good news and bad news about the Alpha 13 version. Uh, the good news is, like with most of the other Alpha versions, this version kicks ass. It's great. They added some wonderful things like smooth animation and a whole bunch of visual aspect stuff, graphical things. You'll see. You'll see. And they also added one of my favorite features. There, you, you can now fast forward time or slow down time. Super cool. So we're going to make a new keeper. We can now name our keeper. Super cool. We're going to name our keeper Nat 20. Mmm, yes. And with that, we are going to create a new world. And this is all pretty much the same. Get rid of that. We're going to pause. Check out the speeds. There's normal, slow, paused, fast, and very fast. So we got many of speeds to play around with. As you can see, the visuals are quite different than they have been in the previous builds. And let's just check this out. Oh, it looks so much better when you paint on it. It looks so much better. And... Yeah. I'm told that a lot of the stuff that didn't work in previous versions now works, like the... the fetching items stuff. All that should work a lot better. They removed the Kraken, because it wasn't working. They're gonna rework it in there as an enemy. So that should be cool. And they added a lot of gold, both in what we will be able to mine, as well as what our opponents will hold, so that we have to worry much less about running out of money. So, let's just start by investigating the area and kind of seeing if this is going to go around somewhere or if I can safely dig in here. I think that's basically all I need to check. We got a pretty good layout of the world. Check out the smooth animation. Oh yeah. It looks a little better when it's not in the turn-based mode that I'm doing. Alright, well it seems like this does suit our needs as a home. So let us dig. Let us dig, let us dig, let us dig. And of course the digging looks better too. Oops. We're going to build out what we usually build out. And maybe this is the first time that you've joined us. Maybe you've never seen Keeper RL before. And so what we're going to be doing right now is gathering up some resources. Just a little bit of all of them so that we can not have to worry about our initial buildings too much. The resources being wood, iron, granite, or stone, as I'll probably call it, and gold. You also have mana, but we'll get more into that later. Right now, we're just going to blow all our mana by summoning a bunch of imps. Yeah, ten imps, why not? We'll get more mana later. I don't like to play with, uh having a mana advantage. What mana is going to be used for is essentially researching things in the future so that we can upgrade. Now there is one thing about this build that I have noticed a little bit and it and it's not the worst but I have noticed that the frame rate does not like zooming out and I like zooming out when I play so that might not be the best situation in the world. So let's have them go slow while I dig all this out and figure out what I'm gonna do. Again, I'll explain things as though you haven't been with me through the journeys through the previous alpha builds, because maybe you haven't. Maybe this is your first time seeing this game, and it's a pretty awesome game. It's a mix between kind of uh, Dwarf Fortress and Dungeon Keeper, in which we are controlling this guy, and we're going to be building a dungeon. And we're going to be using our dungeon to grow an army of monsters, outfit them with all sorts of terrifying weaponry and magical armors and amulets and such. We're also going to be 
if uh, the mechanics of it work out better in this build and I can figure it out, be building traps to defend ourselves. But what the ultimate goal is, is around the area, there are several other factions and we win the game once those factions are dead. So, we just need to go kill them. And the best way to do that is build a nice little dungeon that is going to allow us to grow the army and build the equipment and do the thing to beat the game and it's gonna be awesome. So what we're trying to do now is just build out a couple little areas that I'm going to be using for various purposes later but I dictated most of these areas based on where there was resources and then secondarily on location. We're going to want a sort of a central-ish area to have our storage and then branching from that we're going to make our manufactories where we're going to be building things. The dorm room and beast layer type things are going to be attached around here somewhere. They're far less important. So this might end up being some sort of manufactory workshop or possibly a dormitory or something. We leave this open for a trap area as well as uh, this open more for a uh, training area. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to trap that area, if we're going to try more of an option of building a second way in that we don't guard as heavily, but we trap and maybe not have to really worry about enemies coming through there because the traps will deal with them and then deal with whatever doesn't get murdered by the traps with our creatures. Dig out that. Alright, so we're going to turn this room into storage. Whoosh. And we are going to dig this room out a little deeper because it's going to be super important. This room up here we're going to turn into the most important room at the beginning of the game and that is our library. The library allows us to research as well as allows the keeper to go in and study and gain mana. It also allows some of the other creatures to go in and study and gain mana for us, as well as teaching them how to craft, or how to uh, cast spells. Not all creatures can learn how to cast spells, but pretty much any creature that can study can learn how to cast spells. We're going to build a little bit of a library, and one thing that you need to know about building a library is it is one of several rooms that works off of an efficiency mechanic. Let's speed this up so that we can get some of that library built so I can explain the efficiency mechanic. So if you notice here, the library efficiency here is 44%. Now over here is 89%, 44%. Efficiency runs off of two basic metrics. One, it is judging location and its uh, proximity to other like tiles. That was a bad example. Or that was a bad explanation. A better explanation is uh, having adjacent tiles increases the efficiency. Secondarily, you need torches. Torches don't cost a thing. Which, I don't know, kind of silly at a gameplay perspective. Maybe that'll change in the future. But you need those to light up a room so that it can be working at 100% efficiency. Now that we have a library, we can go into the library tab and see what we can research in the future. We don't have enough mana to do any research, but that's okay because now that our keeper is studying, he's getting mad. So what should we do from this point? Well, what I like to do is I'm actually going to designate this room as a beast layer. I like to start out with a beast layer because the beasts, though not the most powerful of units, do usually not cost any sort of upkeep fee. And since we do not have a whole heck of a lot of money yet, an upkeep fee does seem like something worth trying to avoid. I'm just going to be digging out different areas and sort of plan out what their purpose is going to be. Like this is ultimately going to be a training room. And we got our beast lair and we're getting some ravens. And one of the excellent things that the ravens are going to do is they're going to go out and they're going to map out the area for us. So we get to find out that there's little... It's a witch! There's a witch over here. 
You could do something about that witch. It's a level 1 witch, but it's got 19 attack, so I don't think I'm going to send my raven with its 3 attack and 3 defense at the witch. But there's a witch hut over here that we can possibly do something about. I don't think I've ever encountered a witch before, or if I have, it was uh, not very memorable. A raven was killed by the witch, so the witch does seem hostile. That witch did not like me mapping out the area and finding out that there was a castle of some sort up here. Well, we will proceed. And I will start getting this area more ready for manufacturers. I think I'm going to utilize being near the edge of the map to kind of streamline a lot of that. Once this is dug out, I'm going to turn it into a treasure room so that we can start counting up our gold. I'm not sure if you noticed, I forgot to mention, before we built the storage room, regardless of how many resources we had, it would continue to say zero for these three fields. But once we built the storage and got things in the storage area, it started to count. Similarly, our treasure room only counts once it's built. And now that the treasure room is built around the money that we just dug up there, the gold, we got that. So we are going to build... There are four different manufactories, so we're going to need four different rooms. And I like to make them four by four. And so we'll do that. Hmm. What options do we have to make this pretty? Not many. I think I might have screwed up on making it pretty already. That's okay. Doesn't need to be pretty, just needs to be functional. And while we're just building out, my keeper's up here, getting more mana. My ravens are... Sorry, I hit sorcery, and we don't need to deal with that yet. I'm going to take the library, because I want crafting. Our ravens are out scouting the area, and we've got ourselves a bear who's going to try to scout some areas, but also, he's a bear. Look at that attacking defense. I think that it might be time to go and avenge our raven and take out that witch. Now, we don't really need to take out the witch. Oh, but we're under attack by bandits. Never mind. We don't need to attack the witch, so it's not really important. I was just going to because it was a thing to do, but there are bandits here, and we do need to attack the bandits. And I have a cave bear, and he's going to defend the shit out of us, because bears are grisly and gnarly. The bandit swings his sword, and the cut is harmless. All of the battle text appears up here. And I miss the bandit, but I bite the bandit, and the bandit's leg is bitten off. The bandit collapses and dies bleeding. Yummy bandit. Your next bandit. Oh no. If I stand there, I'll be able to be attacked, because you can attack uh, diagonally as well as adjacent tiles. So I do not want to open myself up to being attacked by three opponents at once. So I miss the bandit, but the bandit misses me. I bite the bandit, and I bite his arm clean off. He drops his sword and dies of bleeding. This bandit gets missed and he swings his sword, but the cut is harmless. I bite the bandit, but he, and he's critically wounded. He's going to try to escape. Silly bandit. I'm going to finish what I started. I miss the bandit. But this other bandit's here, and it seems that he's going to just be there by himself with the injured bandit. I can chase the injured one down later. Yeah, we'll just eat that one right away. Come here, bandit. Where do you think you're going to go? Yum! And that bandit's arm is bitten off, and I believe... That probably does it for this bandit attack. See how helpful Cave Bear is? We don't have to pay him or nothing. All we had to do was spend a little bit of wood to build him a nice home, and he came to save the day when the bandits struck. Go you go, Cave Bear. And we need one more. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There we go. And of course, we get a pack of wolves, another excellent beastly creature that we can get. The wolves come in packs, and they are not the most powerful, 
individually, but as a pack of them, they can do some damage. They can surround an enemy that is much more powerful than they are and take it down. It is quite helpful. Now with crafting, and the reason I wanted to build crafting first and I kind of got distracted by being attacked is I want to build a door. So the next time I'm attacked, I have a little bit of time to not worry about it. Luckily the cave bear was already outside and everything was cool there, but it could have been bad. We also have ourselves a couple of corpses now. Now we start entering into the game of where we are going to be spending money. I would like to use these corpses in a graveyard. Now you want to separate your graveyard somewhat from the rest of your fort. I am going to use this long haul that I've created to build my graveyard more up here. And this can just be garbage, I don't know. But you want to separate the graveyard because like the bodies that we saw in the beginning opening, they can produce miasma. And the only way that I have found to contain miasma is to build a door. We're under attack by bandits again? Really? Alright, alright. Well, let's, film, let's form a team. We got this cave bear, he's asleep, and we got all of these wolves. Command them. It's time for the animals to unite and save the day against the bandits again. Where are they? They're right there. Eat them. The vulture flies away. I miss the bandit. Eat them. Miss the bandit. Eat them. Miss the bandit. Eat them. He's wounded. Eat him. You bite the bandit. His leg is bitten off. The bandit collapses and dies of bleeding. The uh, other bandit misses with his sword and one cuts me, but it's harmless. I eat him. The one that cut me. and I, He is critically wounded and dies. There's one bandit left and I'm going to eat him. He's a sucker, and he's gonna get eaten. You should never have come here. Don't you know what happened to your friends when they came here? There are wolves here now, buddy. Even if you can avenge your, f even if you can avenge your friends and kill the bear, the wolves will finish you off. Are there any more out here? Any more? Any more challengers? Nay. Let us go back to sleeping. All right. Well, it seems like a lot. We the. It seems like that in this new update, the attacks happen a lot more often, which is cool. It kind of makes the game a little more faster paced. If you notice, we got a bunch of mana because when you kill people, you get mana. So we're going to have a lot of options to use in the library. Now, we definitely want basic sorcery so that if anybody does get in there, our, our keeper has a couple of options of spells to defend himself. We are going to want alchemy so that we can start building potions and using them to both buff up our own characters and debuff the opponents as well as iron working so that we can start building better stuff once we finish out building up our forge which we're going to turn one of these into a forge one of these into a library one of these into a workshop and eventually we will get jewelering, jeweling, whatever you want to call it, and build a jewelry over here. Before we forget, we want to make sure that we put our torches. These rooms are all efficiency based rooms, and it is important. And also note that we do not actually have enough wood to complete our tasks, so we are going to need to come out here and cut some more. So let's just cut a couple of these trees. Those count as trees, sure. I don't, those only really look like other oh, bushes. I guess you can get wood out of a bush, sort of. And with that, go. Very fast. Alright, pause for a second. Very fast is too fast. We're going to build our graveyard up here. And we want to make sure not to use all of our granite, because granite in the past has been the most difficult resource to come up with. But with that graveyard we should be able to start bringing these bodies back there and producing wonderful things like zombies and vampires. Who doesn't like zombies and vampires? Everyone likes zombies and vampires. Now these aren't going to get used because I don't have any creatures that are capable of using them yet. 
I'm going to have to build a dormitory in order to get creatures that are capable of using them, but I think that is probably going to be the beginning focus of the next episode, since this episode seems to be going rather long. So, at this point, we will exit, save the game, and I'm going to show you one thing that I forgot to do at the beginning of the video that is important. It's just important to note that you can go into change settings, keep save files, yes, this is an alpha build. We haven't seen any sort of bugs or crashes or anything, but there have been crashes in previous builds, so it's best to just keep the save files on. If the game crashes, there's a chance that you can I can recover my save file. And if you want to play, you can recover your save file. And it's just it's super important, especially since I'm recording, to keep this on. Anyway, I'm Nat20, you've been rolling with Nat20, this is Keeper RL, Alpha 13 version. It is going to be on Steam soon, estimated by March. This version was supposed to be the, ne the version that would start the Steam Early Access train, but that's not what ended up happening. So, next time! And if you want to buy a copy of yourself for yourself, it is still just $15.00. There will be a link to the website below. You buy it off of the website, it's hosted on HIO. You'll get a Steam key when it's released on Steam. It's all in the up and up. I've already got my Steam key since I bought it. You can request it early so that you can help with the beta testing process of the Steam version, if you would like. Um, also, it should be noted that if you read on the fine print below, where you can download the game on the website you can actually make a donation to a wildlife charity and show the receipt via email to the maker of the game through his email address provided in the information below the download and he will give you a copy of the game for that taking that as payment so that's another option you can download fit or you can donate fifteen dollars to a wildlife charity and get the game that way bye